guys, what's up? It's Zell here. Welcome back to another video. So, uh, welcome back to my RPG Maker fangin tutorials. Apparently, it's once a year you get one part of the fangin tutorials because I said in my last video that it wouldn't take me that long. How long has it been? Uh, you know, almost a year. Uh, but it hasn't been a year yet. So that's better, right? Okay, well, I don't know. But today we are going to be going over the class trial because I've been getting many requests about this. Um, and also I want to help you guys because making a class trial is hard. But the only problem is that I don't really know how to do it. I used to make a fan game, as you guys might know, I don't know, called Phantom's Calling. But it, uh, I canceled it because I didn't have the passion for it anymore. In the process of that, I was figuring out the class trial. The only things I have figured out are the talking parts of the class trial and the non-stop debate. The non-stop debate even hasn't been fully polished, so I'm gonna need you guys to bear with me, I guess. This is- I'm sharing all the knowledge that I know. Another thing that I'm gonna do, if I remember, if I don't remember, yell at me. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be sharing this project with everyone. So I'm going to be sharing my Danganronpa Phantom's Calling project. So that you guys can go in the files. You can do whatever you want. I don't care. You can use the same code. You can copy it. I really don't care. You can give me credit if you want, but it's not necessary. Alright, guys. So, <laughs> that took me a second, but I got it figured out. So there's a lot going on here. Let me explain. So the whole map. Why am I saying let me explain? You, I, you, that's what you're here for. Okay, anyway. So the whole map, this part, the whole like actual map part is not going to be shown. So you can literally make this anything. I don't know why I didn't just make it black, but whatever. Actually, I think it was so that I could see the tiles better because I needed to count them. There's multiple components going on here. We'll go on, we'll go, we'll start with the easiest one, which is not that one. That one's useless. Don't pay attention to that one. If, okay, guys, if it has like a switch here, um, that means it's useless and doesn't- isn't being used because it's a switch and I didn't activate the switch, meaning this is just something I was testing and it also doesn't work. So don't pay attention to the, the, this one. <laughs> um, so this one is disable menu access. Uh, all you do is do change menu access, disable, and then this is where I also showed the UI the temporary temporary UI. This is not. This was not going to be the um, final version, but it basically just shows the person talking and the status. These two things are are very static, meaning they are not fully implemented into the game. This is part of the. This is a part of the non-stop debate that I had not figured out. Now, the next thing is. The bullets. I wrote some stuff down here that'll hopefully help you guys. So, input, you use, you use the script here that says input key mapper 81 um, Q. That is basic, it's basically saying that when you press Q on your keyboard, you select the next bullet or you circle through the next bullet. So, it says this here is the bullet screen. Normally, you'd show the different bullets in the bottom left but I'm just using placeholders right now. Uh, the first bullet here would normally be st the starting bullet, aka bullet one. And then I have a variable for each bullet. So bullet one, bullet two. And um, if you were to do this for an actual class trial, I suggest doing like nonstop debate one. And then doing that from there because there's gonna be, mul I'm assuming that you know, there's gonna be multiple non-stop debates and you don't want you get to get it confused with the other bullets that are going to be used in the other debates if that makes sense so no not bullet three crap what was it bullet one? Oh god okay so this is basically showing this variable is showing that bullet one is the one that is currently selected the sound effect is just what the sound effect is, uh, that is used to when the next is one is cycled um this is also a parallel process guys okay so show picture number one bullet one so i have a picture for every single bullet and it says you know it just say it whatever it is bullet one bullet two. these are just placeholders i never got to changing them um and then this is the cylinder it's just a cylinder <laughs> it was supposed to rotate but i don't think i ever got that figured out so that shows underneath the bullets 
and then a weight because I don't remember why. I think it, okay, there's a so that you don't you don't just spam Q basically. So this is just weights until the next input. Comment. This one is bullet two. So then this one is showing like it's the same thing basically. Um, but you put bullet one, you change the variable to zero, and then you put bullet two, you change the variable to one. I think you could also do this with switches, but for some reason I used variables, I don't really know. So basically, it's showing that bullet two is the one that is now selected, meaning bullet two is the one that's selected, so zero equals not selected, one equals selected, basically. You could probably do it with switches where it's like on and off, but I used variables. I just said that, but whatever. <laughs> and then it shows the next bullet, and then you wait. Same thing, basically. And then in order to make it loop, you'd go back to bullet one after bullet three, and then you click, then you do repeat above. Um, let me show you guys. So it's a loop. This is a loop um, command right here. Um, it's a loop and then two conditional branches, or three conditional, a conditional branch for each bullet, basically. So that's the whole selection thing, right? So so that makes it so that when you press Q, you switch the bullets. So this is just the timer. Um, I don't really know how timers work in RPG Maker, to be honest. I just put it there for the video. So there are three parts of the moving statement. So there are however many statements, right? Okay, and then let me show you. And so you see these three things are moving. It ends up repeating, but that's just because I didn't do anything afterwards. So bullet one, bullet two, wait, bullet three, bullet one, and then it continues. I think it does. Yes, it does. Okay, it did work. Cool. Um, it's a little finicky. I don't know why the whole thing doesn't- it doesn't really- sometimes it like doesn't go. Oh, there we go. It just lagged. <laughs> okay. But anyway, that- so bullet two was the right one, basically, and that showed that- no, that's wrong. Um, I'll explain that in a second. So, my cat wants to play. Okay. So there is one statement that is the weak point, obviously, right? So there's this. I have the weak point is a, an image, an event image. I kind of do this in a way that your turn to die does it, where it's that image, right? And- but it's this- this same event stretches across these three blocks here, I guess you could say. This whole thing is where that one weak point is. So these four boxes are, are all the same weak point. It's just so that it has a bigger hitbox, basically. Say so you have three bullets for this debate. Each bullet should be signed a variable. Each bullet has the shoot sound effect and the animation, but only one is the correct answer. Each bullet has the shoot sound effects and the animation. Um, I'll show you guys that. I'm gonna move that out of the way just so that it can do it easier. As you can see, it does that. And then that's the cancel sound effect, meaning it didn't work. And then obviously I didn't uh, figure out the cursor thing, um, but it does work if you click on it. It's just it doesn't have this specific cursor. Bullet 1 equals 1 is basically saying that bullet 1 is selected. The default value is 0 and also that, and it's also that when the bullet is not selected. So 0 equals not equipped, 1 equals equipped, I explained this already, but yeah. This is the process that happens when a certain bullet is selected and then shot. Whichever variable, bullet variable is equal to 1 at this time, is one that will respond with these conditional branches. So the right one is bullet 2, okay? So this is the right one. Uh, well, okay, it shows right here. So this one says wrong, right? So SE buzzer, that's the thing that happens when it's wrong. You basically, if it's wrong, you do the whole thing where it's like, oh no, the character talks or whatever, but I didn't implement that. Um, this is where you would put that when you got it wrong. Comment, this, uh, this is where you, where you deplete the influence gauge, say something like, wait, this isn't it, yeah. Um, the influence gauge obviously never got implemented in my version of this. If a non-stop debate bullet equals two, in this case, bullet number two is right and the others are wrong. This is where you show the no that's wrong animation slash picture. Um, and then that's 
the whole thing. Um, this is comment wrong. Uh, is deplete the yeah. So it's basically just saying this is wrong, this is wrong, this is right, depending on which bullet is selected. Um, and then if you have multiple weak points, you just do it so that it's all wrong, <laughs> uh, basically. Um, and then I didn't copy this, but I should have. Okay. So basically, um, this whole thing should be copied across these four events because it's the hitbox for that event specifically. I don't know why I didn't just copy it and put it in there, but whatever. Um, these three are blank because if they weren't, then the text would overlap with each other. And that's basic they're invisible, basically. Then, I did the whole, yeah, play sound effects, soriwa, and then I have a script here. I don't remember which one it is, but there's a lot. Okay, well, it's one of these plugins that makes it so that you can play videos. I think it is that one, actually. It's the, the PKD VP player, so that you can play videos as gif or GIFs as videos, basically. And then, that's so I showed that animation. That's what the, no, that's wrong animation was. This statement here has a move root, okay? So it's called custom, it's root, and then it's walking animation, stepping animation, off, off. Move right, move right, move right, and then this just is the amount of steps it does, meaning it like moves all the way to like over here or something. You can move it wherever you want, right? These have the same exact move root as this, so basically this moves, these events all move together, together to all the way over here. Those all move the statement. Now you might be wondering about the other parts of the statement that aren't the weak points and they're not clickable. With those, you just show two pictures basically. Um, so this one is statement A. This is a parallel process as well. This doesn't have a move root. This is just a moving a picture. The culprit must have used, that's the first half of the statement, statement 1A, and then the weak point and then below the weak point is statement 1b which is scarf <laughs> it's just one word so these you move them however you want you move the picture that's basically all it is now for the actual background of the class trial this is um i'm using galv gal, galv layer graphics basically and this is also another shout out to Laser Bunny because um, she's the one that helped me with this. And I'm exposing her secrets. Sorry, Laser. Um, <laughs> I mean, just copy this, basically. One of these is Itsuki, who's in the middle. And then Kayla, who is on the right, I think. And then Victoria on the left. It uh, doesn't matter. So then, anyway, then you put layer refresh. If you don't put the refresh, this command, it won't work. So keep that in mind. And then I also have the background music here. I think, oh, the other thing is the, that's for later this one if okay is pressed down play which is okay is z or enter depending on what you're using or whatever what your preference is uh play sound effect shoot it's just the sound effect has a delay for some reason show animation so i think you can actually put a sound effect to the animation so you might not need to do the sound effect thing anyway but show animation player which is basically showing where the animation is going to be played and, it's, and you put player because it's shooting at the player, basically, but but your the player is the cursor in this case. So in other words, it shoots where your cursor is. And then wait so that there's a delay that you don't easily spam it, basically. This is a Lanouge asset, this one. Um, and then I think all the other animations here are ones that I made on my own. These were supposed to be for, like, just, like, random text effects that I was going to do. Like, this one was a question mark. Um shoot you guys can completely take this i don't care you can change the the color whatever you want to do you can take that i don't care just make sure that when if you make the animation on your own that you make sure it kind of goes in a straight line but it also ends up in the middle so you can see like if there's an enemy here or like a an object here which you would where the animation plays make sure it's as centered as possible so that it's not like off or whatever um Oh yeah, so the sound effect is already here. That's about it for the non-stop debate portion. I'm gonna show you guys, basically this event is just for speaking. Was I just have a parallax background on this one so I can just sort of do that. That's, I just erased all the um, tiles here and this was the, par this is the parallax background. If you go here, it says uh, 
para, para, parallax. I don't know how to pronounce it, but that's that. Um, and I also disabled MV3D for this because I wanted it to all be 2D. Uh, never figured out if I could even really do a class trial in three in the MV3D, but that's a whole other thing. I'm not using MV3D for this tutorial anyway. And then, okay, yeah, so here's the UI. It's Sachiko talking, or well, thinking, I guess. Um, the item that was used that was, I mean, the rope in the closet, right? And then Kayla. Uh, <laughs> and then it just repeats. So for that one, I mean, you can just look at my event right here. So uh, basically, it's just showing pictures, and then you move the pictures, and that's all it really is. So it looks like a scroll effect. Um, if you had a background and not a parallax background, like an actual background, like you put put an image in the background, you could also scroll that so it looks like it's scrolling uh, instead of just staying still like it does here. And that's pretty much it for the class trial, I think. Um, I don't think there's anything else I should I need to go over for the basic stuff. Um, did I go over a GIF system? I did not. I can't remember if I went over free time events and GIFs. Someone remind me in the comments whether I did or didn't. Nope, you didn't. I think I was gonna make a video about that actually. Literally shut up, no one cares. I decided to record this one instead because I knew how uh, requested it was. So I can explain, I might make a vid another video if you guys would like for me to explain how to do the free time event system and gifts because it's actually a lot harder than it looks. It's a, it's a very, it's actually a very complicated system for the free time events. There's probably an easier way to do it. I don't know. <laughs> You guys can check out my um, sample file in the description. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. I don't know if I'll be able to answer them. Like I said, I didn't finish. I didn't figure everything out about class trials. Obviously, there's like other mini games and whatnot that I didn't figure out. But just keep in mind that a lot of it is moving pictures and layers. So. With that knowledge, you can kind of do like scrum debate. That one's pretty easy to like, I'd say is somewhat easy to program compared to like um, argument armament, which is, you know, argument armament with uh, rebuttal showdown. That's the one I meant. Um, so that is gonna do it for this tutorial. Thank you everyone for watching. And I'm so sorry that this, I really am sorry that this took me so long. I. Don't know why I kept delaying it. I think it was because I was waiting to see if I could completely figure out the class trial, every nuance, so that I could make a video about it. But since I canceled my fangin, I kind of just gave up on it. And I should have told you guys that was awful of me. I also lied in my previous video. I didn't know I was really lying at the time though. I didn't know that I wasn't gonna upload more, basically. I thought that I was going to. I've been having a lot of issues, <laughs> personal ones that have been preventing me from making videos as I made an announcement about, but yeah. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. Please let me know in the comments down below if you would like a tutorial on the free time events or a tutorial on MV3D for Fangins, which is a lot more complicated, but I can make a, a, a simple video uh, describing it. Just let me know guys, I'll make a poll maybe, I don't know. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment below and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you on the next video. Goodbye.